Hi everyone, and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie and Brittany, my special Hi. guest here today. <laughs> welcome back. We're sorry for our technical difficulties. <laughs> I, I so. think I was saying something about technology. We absolutely <laughs> love it. It takes us in great places and great directions and gives us lots of help. But then on the other hand, it can be kind of frustrating here and there. <laughs> so I so apologize for the technical difficulties that we've had. Um, I'd like to get started though. I appreciate your patience. And I just want to welcome you. This is part two of a three-part series on our bench pillows. And today we're talking about hooping and stitching, which is like, I think the most fun part about the whole, you know, prep work is important, but it's not as fun as it is to stitch it out. So we're going to get started. Today I'm going to teach you about three different hooping methods. One is traditional hooping. We're going to use placement line and modified traditional. Those are the three types of hooping that I'm going to show you today and I'll give you a few tips on each one as we go through that. Um, I also want to say thank you so much for all your comments that you had last week. Really appreciate it. That was so much fun to see yes. all the different things that you guys have been making. The bench pillow, I've seen it made as a bench pillow but also as table runners. I've seen it as wall hanging. Those were great. Thank you so much for sharing. If you have any questions please Type your question in, and if we don't catch you live, we will answer it for you eventually, uh, hopefully later today. We appreciate your help. And I love it that you guys help each other in answering questions. That's just, that's just so fun. Yeah. It's a great little fun community. Yes. I do want to mention next week is sewing. I know there was a few people that mentioned, what about the sewers? Yes. Please, we love the sewing as well as embroidery. We're gonna go over the bench pillows that are sewn next week. I've actually made a few of the sewing version myself. I love it, I enjoy sewing too. So that will be next week. Also, I just wanted to point out, somebody made a great comment last week. They said, what if I don't have a six by 10 inch hoop? And another person had answered and suggested that you can still use a five by seven hoop on all the parts that are five by seven or smaller. And they, what they had done is use the SVG files, printed out their, for example, the welcome on the welcome home pillow. If you can scan over there, you can see that the welcome can be printed out on an SVG file and then you can actually stitch around that because the ELCOME part is a six by 10 inch. But if you did the whole thing, you could do the whole thing in a sewing part version and then finish all the words autumn and all the other pieces with your other hoops. So great suggestion. Super helpful. Great yeah. tip. Creative <laughs> tips. I appreciate those. Mm -hmm. All right. So one thing I didn't cover last week that's so important and I wanted to make sure that I do cover that today and that is um, make sure that you finish the arrows. I know that we talked about the actual markings and labeling the markings and how you draw them and where you get them. I didn't finish the points on the arrows. Our segment was running a little bit long, so I think I may have forgotten that part of it. But if you look here on the diagram, you can see there's an arrow. So I just make sure my arrows match. And these arrows are horizontal right here on 2B, so I make sure that those match. Those are important later on, and I will show you why. And then if you also noticed, I had my hoops written so that I knew what hoop I'm gonna pull out and use. All right, to get started, we want to pull our files. Now, last time we showed you how to pull the direction file, and today we're gonna to actually pull the embroidery file. So if you can zoom over here to my computer, I've got it pulled up and I'm just gonna use my mouse to describe. I have my CD drive right here and I've pulled it up and this is from the CD. And then I have my jump stick. I don't have it named, it's no name. <laughs> that's gonna be where I put my, that's my thumb drive, so that's where we're gonna put the file. So I go under embroidery files. So I'm gonna double click on that one. And I'm gonna work with VP3 today for my Viking. And you'll hear it running just quickly. This is just live, so this is what happens, right? So here you can see that that's AM, there's your letters. For autumn. This is part 3B. There's your leaf block. I'm looking for part one, which is right there. So I'm going to click on part one. And then what I do is I drag and if I can grab it, I drag and I drop it to my no name, to my thumb drive. And then if I click on my thumb drive, you can see that's just right there. 
So I've got it ready and then I just simply eject my thumb drive and there we go. And that's how I would get each file that I need. And I'm gonna let, yeah. Brittany's gonna describe how you <laughs> would do it if you've got a Microsoft Windows. Okay. Yeah. So I've got it over here. I have the same window pulled up that Laurie did with um, the disk and it has all the files. You'll see that I've already pulled up the PES files just right there on the end. I don't know if you can see that, but it says .PES and that's really important. If you would have looked at Laurie's, you can see that it said VP3 so that, um, so that you make sure you have the right file type for your machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert my USB drive into my computer and we'll wait usually a window pops up for that oh there we go oh well we have a problem with that see technology <laughs> we're just gonna continue so you see that this is empty so this window is for my USB drive so I'm just gonna separate those a little bit so I know which one I'm working with. This is my CD, and this is my USB drive here. So we're gonna take the, did you want the part one, Laurie? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take the Welcome Autumn part one, PES, and I can drag it over. You can see it says copy to USB drive. So when I let go of the mouse, then there it is on my USB drive. So then I can exit those windows and then I can come down here and remove my my eject. USB or eject my USB disk. There we go. Perfect. So there we go. And it's ready to go into my machine and it has the file that I need. So hopefully so, that was helpful. Yeah. Hopefully that will help because yeah. there's a lot of people that do call with that kind of question. Yeah. So all right. Mm -hmm. To get started with, we're gonna do the first type of pooping. And the first type of pooping that I'm going to cover is actually called placement, line placement. Um, and the reason it's called a placement line is you'll see that the very first stitch on the computer or on the sewing machine, it's going to stitch a placement line for my fabric. And that's where I'm going to place my fabric. Now this little notch is very important right here. That is where I'm going to line up. And this was from the file that we just downloaded, which was part one. So I'm gonna find my number one, which is my part one, and I'm gonna actually line that right up there on that line with my part one line matching that little notch. So you'd be saying, well, how is that gonna happen? Because it's just laying there loose, right? Well, what I do is, I have this wonderful <laughs> magic Kimber Bell tape. <laughs> That's the very first thing I do is I tape that down so this does not move. I tape that down. Right on top of the placement. Right on top of the okay. placement line. Now there's a couple different things. If you have an iron, a fusible mesh, we do recommend the mesh, but you don't have to use mesh. You can use tear away, you can use cut away as well. What you would do is if it's the fusible mesh, you would just simply go and iron just this side. Don't touch the, the fusible part, but just you would fuse your fabric down. That would be the first way. If you've used cut away or tear away, then another way that you can do after you've taped that down is I would fold this back and then I get a temporary uh, basting spray and you can actually spray just your fabric and I just roll it then right down onto my hoop and then it stays in place. And so that's the second way. Now, after you've got this secured in whichever measure that you wanted to do it in, I like to roll this up just a little bit, about to there. Sorry for the okay. reach. <laughs> and I take these pins and I'm gonna pin this out of the way because there's been so many times when this will roll underneath your project if you're sliding it on and off of your a sewing machine to do the applique pieces and then you've got to cut around the applique pieces. You don't want this tucking underneath when you slide it back in. It's so sad if you've got a corner it's that true. catches. It's yeah. happened to all of us. <laughs> I, I admit it's happened to me so many times. So that's why I do pin it. Just up here out of the way. Don't, don't pin it down um, in the area where you're going to be stitching. 
All right, the second thing is when it does the very next stitch, which is stitch number two, it's gonna make a basting box. And I'm gonna show you the basting box that it makes. Oh, thank you. So here's one that I finished, just the stitch out part, and I left the tape so I could, you could see where the tape was. And you can see it does a basting box, and then it does the applique pieces. And I love glitter, so I have yeah, to add glitter, love glitter. In. It's so much fun. Yeah. So awesome. we're done with part one. So now we're going to move to part two. Well, part two shows one of the methods. It's called modified traditional hooping. And part of it is because it's hooping this way. And I've got here with me a, a, a midi hoop. Love these hoops. These are great hoops. This is from a Bernina. So what I like to do, and I'll kind of describe what I've started doing. I put this down first, and then I take my mesh, and I lay it kind of over the top where I think it would be. And then I take the next part, and I kind of center my, whoops, I'm 2A, not 2B, Laurie. <laughs> Good catch. Okay. So I lay it down with this primarily centered over the background uh, stabilizer. Then I'm going to take my inside piece and what I like to do is I'm going to lay it so that this is uh, going across and then just because I didn't draw my lines all the way across to make it a little bit easier, I kind of lay that down and I'm going to stand up just so I get a good bird's eye view and I want to make sure that I've laid my hoop and it is straight that direction. And it is almost straight that direction. I need to slide it this way just a little bit. Once I have that, this is what I like to do. I gather my fabric and I pinch the back, the stabilizer along with the fabric, along with the top hoop, just the top hoop. And then I make sure before I've started that I've got my hoop set big enough that I can insert the hoop in. And then I pinch those three together and I insert it in the hoop. Now, if your hoop's moved sideways, I still keep these three pinched and I use these other three fingers and I slide it whichever direction it needs to be slid until I've got it in the position that I want it in. And as you can see, once I slip that down in, this is uh, directly in the middle and it goes directly across the top. And if you want to check that again, you can always use your ruler again. And then I simply tighten the hoop and then it's ready. So that would be modified, and the reason it's modified, can you see this isn't all hooped in there? Can you see how that's hanging loose? So you'd be going, um, what am I gonna do with that? Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, <laughs> Kimberbell tape right there. You can just tack, uh, tape it right down with the Kimberbell tape, and that will hold that in place. And that's what we consider a modified. So right there, um, you can take this to your machine, and once you slide it into your machine, Actually, take your needle and just drop it straight down and it should drop straight down in the middle of that and you know you've got it in the right position so that's, that's a great, great way tool. I know there's a lot of sewing machines or embroidery mm -hmm. machines that have a laser light you can push the laser light and it shows you right where that is as well but if you don't no frets just put that needle that needles a great uh, visual to see exactly where the center of that design is that's a great tip I'm gonna do that. So, and then the traditional method would be if it already hoops directly in your hoop. Um, I'm gonna switch over here to a uh, brother. So if we were to I think hoop we this. might have flipped again. I'm just gonna flip my screen so that they can see it the right way. Okay. okay. So one sec. That is great. Okay. You got your next so, the right direction? Yeah, I don't want them to have to flip. So let's, okay. So we, so is there that the arrows? Is that the way the direction? Because yes. I noticed last time with the Bernina hoop, you had it going this way, but these arrows. This next one, and it actually would be, this is a six by 10 hooping, so this one actually okay. wouldn't work because it is too small. But you think, okay. good question, Brittany, <laughs> thank you. That's so I've great. got a Foff hoop here, or Viking, they're both interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So what I've got here is, for example, it goes in the machine this direction. So yes, I wanna make sure that when I'm hooping this, pull that off, I'm hooping it with those arrows going up and down. 
Okay. Up and down vertically so that I'm hooking it right there. And with the right. floss, uh, right here are the crosshairs. And so I'm there again, I want to line those up. And I'm going to line up the top and the right. bottom. And then that's, once again, I like to pinch this. And that's when I slide this bottom around with my fingers until I can find where the outside edge is. There we go. And then I push it down in the hoop. That and then so I snap slick. that. And there again, you can mm -hmm. double check that with your ruler and mm -hmm. double check that with your ruler to make sure it's correct. And you put a piece of tape. <laughs> and you're ready and good to go. There and it's go. gonna do the E-L-C-O-M on this part. And of course it's gonna be you know, sideways mm -hmm. on your machine. <laughs> so, yes. but that was that would be how you would hoop and stitch out, mm -hmm. and you just continue that through for the rest of all the stitch outs. Yes. So it's kind of fun. It's a relaxing process mm -hmm. once you get past the anxiety of I don't know how to do that. I've never done it before. So hopefully this helps. And next week we want to get into uh, sewing. sewing the yeah. sewing version. Mm -hmm. One more thing I wanted to mention was the parts that are two parts. There's gonna be a two part on the, where it does the, the 3A and 3B, which if you look up here, this would be 3B, 3A. And you can see there's a continuous uh, stitch right here. And then these are four, and then this is 4B and 4C would be your owl. So the this will overlap just slightly, just so that you don't have uh, a hole or a seam missing. So the, uh, the designs are made that way. So they have a slight mm -hmm. overlap in anything that's a part A and part B and it's still one solid mm -hmm. design. Yeah, that's the same with the Christmas wreaths. If you've made the Christmas bent pillow yeah. with the three wreaths, they'll overlap a little bit and it's made, it's made to be that way. So yeah. So you'll yeah. have one nice, beautiful, continuous design. Yes. So please <laughs> tune in. Uh, mm -hmm. Share this with your friends that are trying to do bench pillows, and hopefully this will help you get over the fear and get those bench pillows made, especially for the holidays coming up. Yes. So much fun. Yes. Yep. Thank you Thank so much, you. and we'll see you next week.